everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Dear Dr. Mao. Tonight's topic for August is Five Elements Feng Shui. Give your home energy a makeover. Sometimes life can leave you feeling like you've been put through a washing machine and then hung out to dry, like seriously, with wrinkled skin and bad hair. Thanks, life. But that's the way it is. If you don't want your power to be given away, then it's time to bring out the healthy, calm, and centered individual that you are by applying a little feng shui to your home and your personal spaces. Feng shui divides the world into five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. If you have an area of your life that doesn't feel quite right, try harmonizing it with the other elements and you'll find that it becomes more effortless. So tonight, Dr. Mao is going to be sharing with you the fantastic potential for personal space transformation that's available to you with really simple techniques and tools that you can switch up your life and well-being for the better. Uh, we're going to jump straight into this, and I think our first question for Dr. Mao, we're so happy to have you with us tonight, is explain to us exactly what Feng Shui is and why it's beneficial for us. Well, first of all, you know, we are uh, preachers of our environment. In other words, um, every single day, every single place, we respond to the obvious which are color, sound, shapes of furnishings, a shape of the room, for example, the amount of lights coming through, the airflow, all that, that's obvious. But what's not so obvious are the subtle and things that you don't readily detect that can affect you in all aspects. You know, can subtly affect your health, your moods, it can affect your, your relating to other people in your relationships, for example, let's say with coworker or your boss or your employees, as an mm -hmm. example. Um, it can affect uh, your, even your career trajectory and how, you know, what you bring on a daily basis, even though you bring good intentions, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to go your way. And finally, it can affect you financially. Uh, there are, you know, what we call, um, you know, energy, energetic leaks that can deplete you of your financial energy in your life. So feng shui in a nutshell is learning how you can leverage your environment for better health, better love, and, you know, more prosperity, right? And that's really what we want. We want more happiness. We want to be healthier and we want to have the means to live a good life and to be able to help other people. Okay, and what about for a new person, somebody that's new to Feng Shui, what would you recommend is the best place to start for them? Well, so, so Feng Shui is this very ancient philosophy and practice dating back to five, six, five, six thousand years in China. In fact, mm -hmm. I'll go far, farther than that, but at least in the recorded history we've got this much uh this many years and it has often been used as a way to align your placement all mm -hmm. right align your placement with maximum positive energy so so that's really simple for you to visualize and right. the easiest place for a beginner to feng shui all right to start with is just when you walk into a room or any space, just close your eyes and sit quietly, quiet your mind, quiet your thoughts, you know, and just ask yourself, how do I feel? This, is the space uplifting or does the space kind of bring me down? Do I feel oppressed here or do I feel really expansion, you know, mm -hmm. you know sort of opening? Does it, does it help me have a clear mind or does it affect me? Um, so, you know, these are kind of simple things that you can just start with just to see how you feel. Get intuitive about a space because everybody can have that sense. And then as you learn more about feng shui, then you realize how important it is to, to have basic knowledge. For example, the five elements. Mm -hmm. The five elements is, is a framework in which you can understand through your personality, you know, there's uh, all of us contain this five elemental energy within us, but 
each of us have a dominant element, an element that really stands out, that can really define your perception of life and your response to mm -hmm. others and in your life. And by discovering what element you are, then you simply you know, for, uh, use this concept of five elements and what helps your element and what actually uh, you know, sort of destroys your element, if you will. Not maybe destroys it is a really strong term, but what blocks your element. And mm -hmm. understand that you'll be able to apply feng shui principles very easily in your workspace and your home space. Okay. And can you explain the correlation, that link between the five elements and the five healths, and then how that ties into a personal space? All right. Well, so the five elements, as I mentioned, uh, you know, there's the wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. Each of these elements have a specific expression, and it's mm -hmm. expressed through your personality, it's expressed through your body type, it's expressed through your health uh, tendencies. And, but these elements, by discovering, you know, sort of what element we are, all right, this is personality, body type, and so forth. Mm -hmm. We can then understand how in each of our, each aspects of our lives, we, it basically, you, we are using this, you know, sort of um, uh, modus operandi, if you will, this, this operating system of who we are and approaches in each of these areas of our life. And these areas include your physical health, obviously your vitality, your physical health is so important because it's like a car. You don't have a car that runs and takes you from A to Z, then it, it's going to, you're gonna have difficulty, you're gonna have breakdowns, you're gonna have uh, difficulty actualizing your life. Uh, and then emotional spiritual health is the second area. And so important to have that as a grounding because mm -hmm. if your mind, is is not happy if your spirit is fearful and not feeling connected uh, it's going to dictate and, and and interfere with your actions in life mm -hmm. um, the decisions you make or, or don't make um, then we are talking about relationship health because that's a huge area in our lives we don't live as hermits now people do choose to live as hermits but really in life you know, all the great research have shown that people who live to 100 or beyond, people who are healthy, tend to be social. In other words, you have a community around you. You have uh, partners or others who are around. And so your relationships are very important. They can, you know, make you really happy or make you miserable. Obviously, we want to work on ourselves so we're not dependent or codependent on others, but we seek to develop interdependence and learning feng shui is going to help you achieve better and more fulfilling relationship and then then there's work health you know we all spend a good part of our lives working mm -hmm. and hopefully you're working in you know doing things that expresses your talent your gifts and your purpose really at the end of the day we derive meaning right from our work not just our financial sustenance, but also, you know, a place where we can feel fulfilled doing something that's important to us. And then finally, of course, you know, financial health is another area of our lives that really affects, you know, to totality, if you will. I mean, obviously, you can live a good life without a lot of material. And it's good to be able to do that and not look to the material for fulfillment. But if you have you know more than enough then you can share and that there's nothing more joyful than to be able to share with those you love and those you care and other less fortunate people so mm -hmm. that's what we call the five health and so by learning about the five elements and what element you are as well as what element in your you know sort of surrounding corresponds to each of these elements, what you can do to accentuate or neutralize each of these elemental energies 
that can bring more positive influence into every area of your life. Okay. So maybe what we could do is um, explain to them, because I just for all those in our audience, we do an entire workshop series on this, and we have it available as distance learning. I'm going to have Dr. Mao go into that in a little bit. But it's, you know, it's unusual for us to condense everything down into the 45 minutes we have with you here. Um, but maybe what we could do, Dr. Mao, is give them some affordable examples of just really good solutions we could do in our home using the different elements and kind of pinpoint some example elements and things that you've heard frequently from um, those that you've worked with bring up. Absolutely. <clears throat> uh, so the simple, like really economical solutions to just changing things around in your life uh, right away would be using these what we call elemental, you know, uh, influences. These are influencers, right? So, for example, um, an, an example of a fire element object would be a candle. Simple right. things like a candle, because what does that do? That brings light, mm -hmm. and light, and 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 what it does is it really it's a very special thing. Our the human human beings and also all animals on this planet respond to light. As mm -hmm. soon as there's light, our eyes go to it. So you walk into a room and guess what? Your eyes go right away to where there's light, not darkness, but light. Uh -huh. So we're always looking for that light in our lives, right? Mm -hmm. And so candle is the perfect, simplest way to help to bring that fire elemental energy into our lives. And, uh, and, and so, and also not just candle, but mm -hmm. what the candle represents. And so uh, when I was teaching my feng shui course in which if, you know, I would encourage all of you, if you're interested, it, it's life changing. It truly yes. is. Um, and uh, when you take these courses, you'll learn about each of these things and by inscribing a certain um, talisman, these are symbols, that have really energetic influences, right? And so, for example, uh, you can think of them as like blessings, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there, we have talisman infused and actually written onto these candles. So as you burn these candles, that energy is released, and it mm -hmm. can help to uh, support support you. So examples are we have one for uh, health. Mm -hmm. uh, physical health, right? Health and vitality, for example, and longevity. We have one for uh, love and happiness uh, for relationships, as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one for uh, abundance and prosperity, right? So again, these are different parts of your uh, life that we had mentioned earlier. So you can, you can play with these. And uh, so putting candle in an area that's always dark, that's just very, the, the easiest way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where you can bring more light energy or you can just simply put it on your, on your uh, altar if you like, you know, where mm -hmm. you can meditate to it. Um, other simple objects are this. Actually, I want to point out that. So, so this particular one, this is an actual water bottle. Mm -hmm. The water bottle, I'm, I'm drinking our ancient treasures tea because this tea contains three formulas in one. It used to be called three treasures tea. Uh, what are the three treasures? Well, one is the, uh, it's, it's an emotional tranquility, so help you calm your spirit, that's important. And two, uh, we have an internal cleanse in here, and this is really clearing your, your energy, your chi, uh, that's really important. And then we have another called feminine or creative uh, balance, this creative balance really works on your essence, your, your jing is what we call it. And mm -hmm. uh, so just uh, three and one, but, but coming back to this bottle, right? So this bottle here, it's a color blue. So blue corresponds to water element. This mm -hmm. happens to be my element, right? Mm -hmm. So my element, so that's why I use this bottle. I drink from it all the time. And this little symbol right here, this talisman on the bottle, Mm -hmm. is to affect 
you know, whatever I fill this bottle with, right, I am getting that energy, right? So this energy is wisdom. The, 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 the uh, energy of wisdom infused into my tea, my, mm -hmm. my water. So again, this is another way to use feng shui. You know, feng shui is about really aligning your intention, which you want help, you want prosperity, you want love, you want happiness, um, you want passionate work. So your intention align with understanding how to use the five elements to optimize, you know, your, your, your space, whether it's your home or your workspace. Mm -hmm. What about something for wood? What could wood do? Okay, so um, we also have, um, so, so you can also use um, uh, examples would be like aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. You know, you think, remember we talked about, you know, sort of senses, right? So right. what visual sense or whether it's, it's the olfactory sense, mm -hmm. uh, the fragrance is very mm -hmm. powerful and affects us in so many ways. And so obviously, you know, with, um, with, the, with different elements, you have different tendency, personality. What element we, we give the term authoritative? So someone who's extremely powerful, natural leader, take charge, authoritative, and a bit impatient because you want to get things done. So you're very achievement oriented, but what that does is it makes you a bit tense or intense, I mean, really. You know, I'm sure we all know people like that. You just get, you know, they get so intense. They mm -hmm. can't, they have a hard time relaxing, calming down. Mm -hmm. So using the wood element, um, aromatherapy diffuser, for example, we have a blend of different herbal fragrances, essential oils, uh, that really helps to, exactly. Oh, exactly. There's a diffuser right there. Yeah, diffuser mm -hmm. oil. And, uh, you know, I actually, here at home, I, I gotta show you. Hang on one second. Um, <laughs> he loves his oils, everyone. Well, you know, I, I've, got, I've got all kinds of, you know, so this is my little diffuser here. Uh -huh. So I, I put these diffuser oils in. And so, you know, so the other day, I was I was feel, feeling a little, um, you know, kind of lonely. My my wife's been gone for uh, like ten days. Right. So I'm very excited because as soon as I get done here, I I'm gonna go and pick her up from the airport. And uh, so I, you know, I was just feeling a little maybe in need of love, right? So mm -hmm. I put the diffuser oil for love. That's the fire element, right? Uh -huh. and, uh, you know, because I'm water. I mean, I need some more, I need some fire. I need Very to counterbalance sweet. this water, you know, that I, you know. And uh, so uh, I diffuse that oil and I tell you, it's something magical. I, I just sort of forgot about it. I mean, I felt like, hmm, I felt happy again. <laughs> so, no, that's an example. It's a very practical example of what you can use these oils for. So there's the different elemental oils, the diffuser oils. And then there are the aromatherapy where you can actually apply into acupressure, acupuncture points with these little roller balls that can have instant effect on, on your mood right away. Okay. Well, and not to leave out, we still have earth and metal. What is something that they could either energize their home with or perhaps it's a remedy for them? Well, you know, the, the earth element uh, is an example. When we talk about earth, we talk about... Um, uh, we talk about earth tones, but we literally, you can take a mineral, a crystal, or a rock. Mm -hmm. That rock, when it's infused and inscribed with these, these, these talisman, can be powerful. Just something as simple as that. Putting that as an example, you know, look by your door, um, under your pillow is an example. I mean, mm -hmm. again, if you're trying to cultivate that energy, that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. What do you want? What do you want to bring into your lives? What do you want to bring into your home, your work, right? So this is the easiest way, taking it, it, this, these. So we have these river stones that have been described 
these mm -hmm. wonderful talisman uh, for uh, wisdom, for um, um, physical health and longevity, for prosperity and all that. Oh, and you, you found them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, you know, I have, I, I, I always have one in my pocket, for example. Yeah, I carry it in my handbag too. I love them. Yeah. They're very portable, easy to carry. And so that would be one simple way to help you infuse your life with earth element. That's an mm -hmm. example. So. And metal? What something metal could do? Hmm. Well, so the metal, uh, you know, it, the, the simplest thing to think about is using sound, right? Mm -hmm. Powerful. This is an energy that can be accessible to you mm -hmm. right away. And so it could be, you know, something as simple as a bell or a gong or these beautiful chimes, wind chimes that you can use. Or, you know, we have pre-recorded and composed these beautiful um, elemental music uh, featuring specific instrumentation and notes that can help awaken and bring that metal element into your home, your life. And right. so that's something that is very, very simple and accessible to you. And it's not limited. Like, for example, yeah, so you're, you're, you found that CD. So mm -hmm. that music CD has uh, actually all five elements. Right. Music tracks recorded to it. So you can literally just have that playing in the background. And, mm -hmm. and it's very subliminal. Remember now, you know, so much of what we respond to are things that we don't really notice is in the background. And so yeah. if you have that playing in the background, it can totally infuse whatever element that you're looking to strengthen, whether it's the metal element or the fire element or the wood element, it's all right there. Okay. I was thinking about, um, you know, questions that came up frequently when we were doing our series, um, which is of course available now, uh, they can still have access to it. But I, I found that mm, a lot of the questions centered around, what do you do in your home when you have a partner who's a different element than you, or you might have your partner and your children, all different elements than you. What, what's some advice you can give on that? Uh, make them move out. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no. it's, it, it's all about harmony it's all about finding you know something for everybody truly uh -huh. and that's that's why they're all you know these little things that we bring uh the perfect example would be this is that you know what we've been blessed with are uh the the knowledge and wisdom of herbal you know herbs that have been passed down for generations mm -hmm. and there are formulas that are specifically formulated for each element mm -hmm. and so the wood element we have a wood element formula that takes the edge off your tension mm -hmm. if you have if you're a fire element we have a formula that helps you reduce circulation mm -hmm. for example if you have it if you're earth element we have a formula that helps make sure the digestion is flowing well Mm -hmm. And metal element, we make sure that the immune system, that's your vulnerable spot, can really be helped and supported by that. And finally, the water element, where your kidney adrenals, your hormonal system can also be nourished and fortified. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so with, with a family of different elemental personalities, the first mm -hmm. thing I do is make sure that everybody is taking the element that they are. And right. for example, we have, um, it's interesting that in my family, we, but we have five, mm -hmm. my wife, myself, and three children, mm -hmm. and we're all different elements. I mean, mm -hmm. it's quite something. Um, so each one of us take each of our elements, and then we also take one, you know, it's what we call the five element composite. This is the whole, you know, combining five formulas into one. Uh -huh. So that's, that's what we take as well. And so I would say the easiest way for people uh, with diverse elements is, hey, make sure you're nourishing your element. A and then you can negotiate for the other things like, you know, if you want to diffuse a certain oil uh, mm -hmm. blend, for example, or if you want to use the elemental um, 
aromatherapy just for your needs? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of things that you, you can very easily incorporate right away. Okay. And what about from a decorating perspective? Do you have like a, a, the flow of energy in your home? How do you accommodate suddenly having five different elements in that flow of energy throughout the home? Well, first of all, they have their own room. Right. right. Except, you know, my wife and I do share a bedroom, but I have my office, my home office. Yes. My home. And uh -huh. I get decorated in my colors, right? So uh -huh. I've got all, pretty much blues in there, right? Big blue corresponds to water. Mm -hmm. uh, just to review for those people, maybe first time hearing about the way the colors corresponds to each element. Green, yeah. for example, is wood. Mm -hmm. Red with fire, okay. yellow or gold with earth, and white or silver or metallic with metal. And mm -hmm. finally, the dark color is like the blue or the black for the water element. And so, mm -hmm. so pretty much my office, the walls are blue, like kind of a really very calming blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a little fountain in there, right? Mm -hmm. So that's my water element. Okay. And then, you know, and then if you think about like, if you're, if you're becoming more, uh, you know, uh, if you learn more about feng shui, then you learn five elements. There are what we call the supporting elements, the, the, the element that provides, you know, gives birth to that element. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the metal element is the, my support element because I'm water element. So metal produces water, creates water. And mm -hmm. so in my study, I also have uh, besides my water fountain, right, which is beautiful and makes this beautiful water sound. Uh, I also have a metallic, I have a table, a, a metallic table. Um, I have um, frames, you know, sort of frames and mirrors that really helps reflect this, this beautiful light around. So, so it faces, uh, my, my, my office, you know, faces south. I do get a lot of light, so I do sort of put the curtain down during the day because it's so bright. Um, mm -hmm. but, but when I put the curtain down, then I don't have as much light. And plus mm -hmm. the room is kind of calming blue, so it tends to be a little darker in there. But then with these reflective surfaces, then I really get light bouncing all around. So that's mm -hmm. just like an example of what, what I can do for my office, and you can do the same depending on what your element is. Right, okay. Um, before I ask you the next question, I'm just going to remind everyone that uh, we will be using the last 15 minutes of tonight's episode to answer questions that you have, and they can relate to this topic tonight or any health topic that you wish. So Leah Jonas, our operations director, is moderating on Facebook if you want to submit questions through the chat box to her. She's already starting to send over things to us. And likewise, we have a chat box over here on Zoom, so you can just type in your question um, that is located on the bottom of your menu, and we will respond as quickly as we can to that. Um, we have a lot of people on tonight, so the sooner you send the questions, the better for us, please. Uh, let's see. Next question from me to you. Um, what makes you passionate about Feng Shui? What makes me passionate? Well, because uh -huh. I've seen Feng Shui change my life firsthand, and I've seen Feng Shui change uh, my many of my patients' and clients' lives firsthand. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about people who um, are looking to, you know, have family and can't. You know, they've got, you know, infertility challenges, and by visiting their home and you know, identifying what the blockages are, you know, it's all about flow. Right. We're able to then remove those blockages and really invite this fertility energy into the home and relationship. And then, you know, pregnancy happens and they have mm -hmm. children. And so you know, I've just seen incredible changes uh, that are so profound. And, and, and yet it's so easy, right? It's not. Yeah. This is it's just so accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with you that was what was really profound to myself and I know for Leah too when we started learning from you about this and then you know educating others it was how easy it is and that it's fun it's really fun and easy to be able to accomplish this in both not just your home space but even in your workspace and bringing it into the work environment and you're kind of surprised how people 
that you're you know working with on a day-to-day -day basis change just walking into your small work area um, because it's become more inviting and complementary to both your personality and that of others. So that was really good. Um, okay, so you're going to be going to Michigan at the end of October, the 27th. And this time you'll be talking about health and longevity. Can you share with us what that is really going to be geared to for that workshop? Absolutely. So, uh, yes, I, I do travel around and give these workshops and I'll be giving a one day workshop on feng shui for health and longevity. Mm -hmm. the, the online course for people who can't make it, um, mm -hmm. it's basically five parts. So it's feng shui for a specific objective. So in this case, health and longevity, others are for love and happiness, which is of course relationship. Sure. Um, and uh, so what I'm going to be talking about is how you know, sort of first and foremost, right? If you don't know what your element is, I encourage you to find out by just going to our website, daostar.com, T-A-O star.com, and take a five minute quiz. Very simple, very fast. And from there, you will understand, oh, this is my element. This is my, my dominant element, my fire, you know, I'm fire or my earth, my metal. And these are kind of things that you first, you have to decipher discover who you are mm -hmm. and then from there then it's really plug and play i mean i will talk about the diet nutrition and lifestyle different practices and exercise to what to bring in to your specific area of your home that represents the physical health right so these are the kind of things which happens to be by the way the center of your home this is, this is where, you know, everything revolves around, right? Yes. Should I hold, hold up for them, Dr. Mao, the Bagua map so they can see what that looks like? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, this one, I don't know if I can get close enough, but hopefully. No, no, good. I mean, feng shui, if you uh, think about it, right, it's, it's really about placement. It's the eight, you know, it's the four cardinal directions and then the directions in between them. So there's eight directions. There's these placements on the grid in your home or your work, each one of these areas correspond to a certain aspects of your life, right? So the area we're gonna be talking about in this October workshop is the center. Okay, so mm -hmm. um, I, I think, um, okay, so that's fine. You can, you can take that down. So the center of your house. So, so this is where, of course, um, nourishment should take place. So whether it's a dining room or your kitchen or somewhere, or it could be gathering, you know, living room, whatever it might be, we really need to uh, decorate it with specific colors and objects uh, and, and different features that you can do right away to bring about this health and longevity energy. You know, it's really about like charging your space. You got it, you know, charge the battery when your smartphone runs out of battery it, it, it's um first of all it's a it's a very difficult event for most people because suddenly if their phone ran out of battery and they are panicked <laughs> right first signs of addiction whatever it might be but anyway um but it's the same thing in your home in your workplace there are areas of your uh, you know, living or working space that's completely devoid of energy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't want to go in there. Or when you do go in there, you're like, wow, I don't feel good in there. But you, what you need is you need to charge that space with energy. Energy for specific purposes. And when you learn how to do that, uh, and, and I give very simple advice that is accessible. You know, I'm not talking about moving walls. I'm not talking about completely remodeling your home because that may not be practical and it's probably too expensive anyway. So we're really looking for what can we do with the least amount of effort to completely change your home environment, your work environment. And uh, we've done this in, in our classes where you know, people are given assignments and they come back and they, they, they made a few changes in a, in a space. And wow, I mean, not only do they feel different, but their lives start changing. It's interesting how that works, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's start opening up. I know we've got some questions here. So let's start opening up to the audience and let them send their questions in to us. Um, one of the first ones that we have is, um, I need abundance and I keep seeing money trees at the store. Do these really bring me wealth or what brings me money? All right. So money trees. Um, so if we, we think about um, financial health corresponds to the wood element. And what's the color of the wood element? Green. Talked about mm -hmm. that, right? Green. Right. So, all right. So a money tree, if we look at the money tree, it's got these big broad leaves. Um, I've got one over there. <laughs> I was going to take the, uh, the, the video over there to show you, but no. Do you absolutely have to have that plant, that tree, in order to bless your space with you know, wealth and abundance? No. But it's nice if you can access it. But if you don't, go out and just buy an indoor plant that has broad leaves. That's what you want. And, okay. and by the way, so you bring that into your home and make sure you take care of it. Because if that plant dies, you know, that's not a good Prosperity plant. dies too. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, you got to take care of it. And you know what happens when you take care of that plant? Because you see now you have this intention. I'm going to bring the abundance into my life. I have to take care of that plant. That caretaker means that you now are paying attention to putting your energy towards the financial aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. So again, it has this really subtle but profound change in your, you know, your focus. Now you'll be focusing on that aspect, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so the money tree is is fabulous way of uh, of, of bringing that abundance into your home. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, the next question we have is, how can I get rid of bad energy in my space? So energy clearing. This is what I teach in every workshop. Is like, how do you clear energy? Mm -hmm. uh, so you may move into a new house, a new apartment, uh, or somebody you know came to your house, stayed, and then they left this you know, really stagnant energy, you know, how you want to clear, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so obviously there's different methodology of doing it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so in feng shui, we use a, a few ceremonial ways to do that. First and foremost, you, you sort of create a, an altar in your home. And an altar is just very simple. It, it contains five element objects right, where you bring these elemental energies to a spot in your house that's really kind of quiet, respectful, and where you can uh, put these five element objects. And what are these element objects? Well, one candle, right, so you gotta have fire. Mm -hmm. Two, um, you want to use, uh, um, you want to have water, so get a bowl and get a bowl of clean water, purified, mm -hmm water drinking water not sink water right and three we also have to bring in uh the earth element right so what is earth element so that could be in the form of a you know a rock river rock that we just kind of uh, you just showed us right uh, or a a um you know i i use an incense urn where i fill it with sand Mm -hmm. And that, that is my earth element representation. And then my incense urn is metal. And so that would be good. But let's say if you're thinking, oh, well, I don't have an incense urn. What, what do I use that's metal, right? Mm -hmm. And so metal could be candlesticks. That's metal. Don't forget. Oh, true. Yes. And, and bell, mm -hmm. the bell or gong, right? Those, those are metal. Right, so that's what we're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, and then wood, right? So, what is a wooden object? Well, incense stick is made from wood, and that mm -hmm. would be an excellent representation. And sometimes they do have these incense holders or wood as well. So you just try to make sure there's like these five element representations. 
Now, each of these elements can be used to clear your space. Mm -hmm. Examples are that you can um, <clears throat> uh, rit ritualistically, ceremonially, you can, you can, you know, you, you can burn the incense and walk around your house and using that as a way to clear space. Mm -hmm. You can use your bell or your chime or your gong to use that energy vibration, that sound vibration. Right? You can use uh, the power of fire in this case, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the candle, you can actually put the candle in that space to clear that space, right? Mm -hmm. make, make sure you put it in a candle holder that is safe, right? We wanna make sure. Um, you can the water, you can, again, this is why we, we charge this water with this talisman, right? Mm -hmm. And then that water can be used to sprinkle into that space to clear. Mm -hmm. And so again, you know, there are different ways to do that. If you're interested, you know, I would highly encourage you to take the online course so you can learn, you know, specific protocol uh, that you can follow to clear any space. Mm -hmm. And I've had patients and uh, students and clients who come back and say, you know, it's night and day. After I clear this space, it feels so different. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, thank you. Let's see the next question. Um, the next question is, what's the symbolism of the front door in Feng Shui? Symbolism of the front door. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, it's it's one of the most important place. Really, it's an open. Mm -hmm. So the front door is where you know you come and go every day, and mm -hmm. it's also where you receive the world. You welcome the world, mm -hmm. and so it's also a place where people have the first impression. And the front door. So the color of your front door. This location, the direction by which it faces, does it correspond to your elemental direction, right? Mm -hmm. If you are a certain element and it's the, the direction is maybe oppositional to your element, then mm -hmm. what we need to do to fix it, right? And the easiest fix for that, if, if you find that, that the, your you know, door is happen to open to a direction that's oppositional uh, to your element, well, you just put a bakwa mirror or just a mirror, uh, you know, right by your front door that will help you kind of reflect and repel negative energy. And uh, so that's, that's a very simple way to do that. But, but be, you know, be aware, like when you open your front door, is there an obstruction, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, is there a pole? Is there a tree? Is there... You know, again, you, you, what you want to do is you want to have a clear sight uh, and have no blockage, uh, ideally, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the front door is, is quite important. And um, so, again, it's about flow. It's really about, you know, flowing energy coming in the right direction, supporting your health and wellness. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question. I am looking for love. What can I do to bring that energy into my home to attract it? All right. So, you know, <laughs> it's simple, no, no, but, but a simple question I always ask people when they ask that question is, I assume you live alone right now. And so people who live alone tend to have single things, objects. For example, mm -hmm. They have a bed, they have one nightstand. Now, if you want to add and bring and attract the love into your life, you need to have two nightstands, one for him or her or whoever. I mean, you know, so it's really about uh, a, a, you know, the number two to mm -hmm. match up. So, so what you, you need to make sure there's two lamps, not just one lamp, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so twos. So when you buy, I mean, it's really funny where I, I have, I get asked about this very often than not. You did? And, uh, and, you know, they have one place setting, at, you know, in, in their home, in their kitchen table, they have mm -hmm. one place setting. And I go visit and I go, where's the other place setting? Well, I don't have one. 
I only have one because I'm living here by myself. I said, hmm, well, you gotta really put the intention out there. You gotta have a place to, to bring that energy. So you gotta, you gotta do that, okay? And then what I suggest also is that the, the, the you know, element of love is fire, fire element, and the color mm -hmm. is red. So, mm -hmm. you know, infuse your house with red. Get some red pillows, get some red towels. It could be accent. Some people go and paint an entire wall red. That's okay mm -hmm. too, if it's appropriate as an accent. But hey, find a way to do that. And you can light a candle, because again, bringing light, bringing fire energy into uh, your, your environment mm -hmm. is what you need to jazz up a lot of your life. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, uh, one of the individuals who attended asked a good question in relation to this in love. So when they bring in uh, having how you said the two nightstands, do they leave the nightstand that's symbolic of the partner? Do they leave that empty or should they put things into that nightstand? Oh, they well, first of all, they need to have a light there. Like right. Two lamps, two nightstands, two light, for example. Uh-huh. Oh, absolutely. Again, you know, again, that's where you can put the candle. Good you point. Know, put the candle for love. Right. Like, light the candle. Again, what you want to do is you want to charge that space with energy so mm -hmm. that life, universe, the cosmos can respond to your intention and the energy that you are projecting. Mm -hmm. And don't fill up your closet with only your clothes. Leave some space for your future partner. <laughs> uh, that's the very practical answer. I love that. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, what about your front yard and backyard? Do you feng shui those areas as well? Of course, uh, feng shui applies to inside and outside your house. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, feng shui applies to also, uh, you know, I will tell you how feng shui really evolved in China ancient time they the feng shui of your ancestors tomb is so important because that determines for generations to come the prosperity the, the safety the security the happiness of the offspring mm -hmm. so so the belief was that you know where your ancestors were buried and where what direction it faces and all of that uh, it has a lot to do with you know sort of what happens in the future future generations. Now, uh, we, we don't really have a lot of control over that now, right, with mm -hmm. where we are. However, what we do have is we do have control over where we live. So if you have a front yard, your backyard, absolutely. There's a whole landscaping feng shui, a type of tree, a certain type of tree corresponds to a certain element, believe it mm -hmm. or not. A shape of the tree, that's a perfect example. You know, is, is a tree very tall? and skinny like i've got like i've got six no i've got five palm trees out my front door here right? mm -hmm. and these palm trees are probably 25 30 feet tall with a puff you know of leaves on the top but that's all you see is just these and so again this wood element right right away you see that's beautiful right mm -hmm. and then so again depends on the shape of the tree they actually convey certain elemental energy wood element is all about linear straight you know uh tall trees mm -hmm. okay thank you uh, oh uh last question here what uh can be done in the kitchen to improve to improve element nutrition what can be done in the kitchen so, so I'm imagining they're talking about like, you know, wellness, weight, wellness, and nutrition. Yes. Uh, so, so the kitchen, kitchen corresponds to the earth element. It's all about mm -hmm. digestion, nourishment, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so naturally the color of the kitchen should favor that of the earth tones, the yellows, the oranges, and all those colors, right? Mm -hmm. and there's, you know, so that's, that's natural if you have wood cabinets no problem if you have you know like uh, stainless steel appliances no problem mm -hmm. uh, but 
we want to make sure that you know it's it's balanced it's not overtly in one way or another one or another so but um but obviously the the kitchen uh you know is a place where spent people spend a lot of time so mm -hmm. there needs to be um a balance between uh inviting mm -hmm. appetizing but at the same time it shouldn't be too appetizing uh, <laughs> so you know and so if you have a kitchen that is absolutely only yellow tone or orange tone or something like that you know then then you've got too much earth energy and that mm -hmm. could be that could signify you know excess nourishment which translates into a lot of excessive storehouse in your body so you don't want that so you want to make sure to counter counter that and how do we counter that well um the wood element is the element that actually neutralizes the earth element and ah. so the, the wood element right and mm -hmm. so this is where you can actually have counters right where you eat at where mm -hmm. you you know where you have tall bar stools or chairs that, that's mm -hmm. really because what happened is those kind of tables um doesn't encourage people to sit there all the time right mm -hmm. because you're sitting in the kitchen all day and all you do is just munch and eat and graze and all that that's not so good mm -hmm. and so that that's a one way to deal with that uh mm -hmm. and then wood represents vegetables vegetables mm -hmm. so interestingly you can actually just put out you know like instead of a display of only fruits or sweets or breads or things like that which people do display mm -hmm. i suggest you take cucumbers you take uh you take zucchini you take um, asparagus you take a celery and all that and you make a vegetable basket with that and you can even cut them up and just have them around and so that's one thing you can do is you can snack on those you can start on that idea. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah. So using this wood elemental feature to help you counterbalance the excessive earth element, if you will. Mm -hmm. Wonderful idea. Okay. Well, we're coming up on the hour, and I know you need to be able to get to the airport too. So before we go, you've been so gracious spending this time with us. Um, what are your parting thoughts? I mean, feng shui is such a fun topic that we could go on for hours and hours, but once, what's one benefit you'd like to leave them with to think about as we say goodnight? Well, you know, underst you know uh, feng shui is really ultimately about how to manifest mm -hmm. your, yourself, who you are. It's a, it's a way for you to express who you are in your environment. Mm -hmm. and that's really it, ultimately, right? Uh, sometimes we have a hard time expressing ourselves at work, in relationships, whatever it might be, but boy, at home, you know, the, learning about feng shui, it's truly, mm -hmm accepting embracing and expressing who you are ultimately and uh and if you're not doing that then you're missing out on an incredible opportunity to be you true very true oh uh, thank you so much dr mao this is really wonderful and to our audience thank you we had so many people on tonight we we're very very appreciative that you spent this hour with us um, we will be back later in the month. We have our Tao of Life Telestudy group that is coming up on August 15th. That's a Thursday. And uh, then that will be with Dr. Dow. We also have with Dr. Dow Women's Wellness and Fertility. Uh, typically, we do that the second week of the month, but he's going to be traveling. So we will be doing our episode for that on August 22nd. And the topic is going to be breast cancer, how to reduce your risk. And then at the conclusion of the month, um, we are talking about advice for breastfeeding challenges. That will be on August 27th. And that's with Sawan and Sally Goliubov. And, um, you know, this is, uh, 
breastfeeding month. It's awareness for breastfeeding month. Sorry, my tongue got tied. But it is a very important topic to many of you out there. And so we did want to ensure that we could give you um, opportunities to educate yourself both through our wellness chats as well as um, through our newsletters. So if you haven't had a chance to check your inbox yet, uh, we did send out at the beginning of the month um, from Dow of Wellness some excellent articles both on this topic as well as other health topics, and then the same for our um, Infinity Wellness Living. Uh, we have several excellent articles too. And all through the month, every weekend, we'll be publishing more education for you on this topic and many other topics. So we hope you'll tune into those. Um, again, Dr. Mal, thank you so, so much. This was an absolute pleasure. And oh, for those of you that aren't aware, Dr. Mao was on the Home and Family Show last week. So we did send an email reminder, but if you haven't checked it out, go over to ourdowstar.com and you can watch a replay of that episode too, because it was very good. It was asked Dr. Mao. So he was giving um, many different tips based on questions that were submitted to the program um, from individuals around the country. So, and he will be back on the Home and Family Show in September. So we're looking forward to tuning into that with them as well. So thank you very much, Dr. Mao. Thank you to everyone who sat in with us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks. Take care and have a wonderful night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.